joined by uh, a little more quarterbacking firepower. We've heard from Taylor Heineck. You got to talk to him a little bit today. Cooper Rush now with us here on the show. Cooper, thank you for making the time. Thank you for hopefully uh, being the signal caller of this segment because I'm deeply underqualified. To do that. <laughs> yeah, so thanks for having me on. Uh, what's your uh, experience around Radio Row been like so far? Anything that's really jumped out to you in a very strange environment? Uh, it's been good. It's definitely a little calmed down without tons of fans running around, running through, so yeah. that's kind of nice. Do you uh, do you have some mixed emotions of coming around the Super Bowl this close? And you know, every again, we're on in Kansas City, so every time I look up and I see you know Cincinnati Bengals stuff, I'm I'm a little bit conflicted because I feel like it should not be orange and black; it should be red right. and gold. But what about you from uh, from the Cowboys' perspective? I mean, how how good that team was this year? Yeah, we were a special group. I mean, we had a, a great locker room, great chemistry. Um, we really came together throughout the whole season. And uh, like you said, thought we were going to make a run. Then it comes to an abrupt stop. Um, obviously very disappointing. But overall, you look back, pretty successful year and a lot to build on. Yeah, how do you gauge success like that? Because I don't. it doesn't make any sense to me for 31 teams to say they've failed each season, right? Like only one gets like the real success, I guess. So if you personally, you for a team perspective, what's a successful season mean? Yeah, we won our division, made the playoffs, won 12 games, which is really hard to do in this league. Um you know, the stats on offense and defense kind of speak for themselves in terms of production-wise. It was a very productive year. But you're right. I mean, the goal is to win the Super Bowl. And uh, so ultimately it was a, a failing season. But you look back and there's a lot of good things, too. Anything for you in particular? You talked about, you know, stuff you want to build on and grow from. Like whenever you get to the, the end of the season, however much time you take to kind of settle down and, and, and recoup a little bit, to, no pun intended, uh, to, uh, to recoup a little bit after the year, at what point do you start looking back and, and picking on things that you want to be better at next year? Do you have any examples of that this early on in the offseason? Uh, yeah, just the first thing comes to mind, we got probably you know, our penalties. We had a lot of penalties. I think we led the league in penalties and um, those are hard to overcome. It's kind of amazing the production we had overcoming those penalties, <laughs> yeah. uh, which shows you us our, our fire, firepower, and that, that's a general theme. And um, you know what the offense thinks is, hey, if we just don't stop ourselves, you know, no one can stop us. Well, and I'm also really interested. Obviously, Dak is there in Dallas as well, and uh, you got the game, your first start against Minnesota. You get a, a pretty good effort there and a, a comeback, a, a late drive, a late touchdown and everything. That had to be uh, quite an experience. I guess to, to start with that, getting that uh, kind of a, a your, again, first start out on the stage, you get a moment like that late in that game where you've got to cook up a, a little two-minute drive. It might have been less than two minutes altogether. But uh, what, what was your mindset like going into that game and then going into that drive at the end? Yeah, super excited You know, to get a chance to play, get a chance to start finally you know waited five years for it um as a backup you kind of think can i do this you know if you haven't played in a while then, <laughs> right. then you finally get the chance it's not not relief but it's you know more like you know this is finally here you know can say i did gave it a go you know whatever the results are and was really happy to be with a good team i mean our defense played really well we got playmakers everywhere it makes my job pretty easy um just find those guys um and move the ball and we did just enough Every time you, you hear a coach talk about, you know, a quarterback gets hurt, what about the what about the next man up? Well, it's always the next man up. They're always prepared and everything. Can you put me in the, the headspace a little bit in the day-to-day -day throughout a season where you are always kind of just wondering, could this be the snap where I'm ready to – I need to be ready to go or, or what that process is from a week-to-week -week basis before you do get that opportunity? Yeah, it's the hardest part of the job is the mental side for sure. You, you're not getting reps. You're not getting any – you're not running your plays during the week. You run the other team's plays. Right. And, you know, you're still expected to, you know, if something happens, you got to go run our stuff without repping it <laughs> right. with guys you haven't played with. But right. uh, it's part of the job, and, you know, you're staying ready. And then um, I'd say the mental side is definitely a challenging side, just staying ready week in, week out. You know, you do all the work. You don't play. You got to go do all the work again. You don't play. Mm -hmm. um, just sticking with it because, you know, that's your job, and the team needs you. Ne needs you to do that so you don't waste a game or waste an opportunity. The specifics of, you know, running other teams' plays and some scout team stuff and throwing the ball to guys that, are, that aren't the ones you end up with out there on the field is super interesting to me and, and something that I, I think we probably don't talk about enough whenever guys come in. I feel like it's usually, you know, what's the what's the downgrade from this quarterback to this quarterback? But in reality, again, like the way you prepare over the course of a week-to-week basis, that, that has to have a huge influence. Well, actually, you tell me. Does that have that big an influence? You mentioned it, you know, building that chemistry. Well, what is that process like? Uh, I think it definitely affects a little bit. It shows up um, for sure. It's probably why... You know, backups records aren't as good as the starters. Right. You know, the reps practice matter. Um, but when you're on a really talented team like us, mm -hmm. it helps a lot. And a lot of those guys have been around for a while, and I've been around for a while with the Cowboys, so I know them. 
you know, I might not throw the ball to Amari Cooper every day, but mm. I'm there watching it, and I understand and understand our scheme well enough and things like that and how to run the offense. Um, and they get open, make my job easy. There's been a lot of talk about Kellen Moore also over the last, uh, really last couple of years, I guess, but sort of this year and this offseason in particular. Has he done anything unique in, in your time together where you've, you've thought, you know what, this guy does have something a little special? Or, or what, what's, that, uh, what's that experience with him been like? It's been awesome. Ever since day one, my rookie year, he's been great when he was, when he was playing, <laughs> which is funny. He's played with a lot of guys that he's coaching now <laughs> yeah. that, are, that are on the offense. Yeah. Um, but he's great. He makes our job easy as a QB. He, I think the way he presents it um, – and the way he sets he, him being a QB himself, I think we do. He asks us to do a lot, but the way it's presented, and the way it's built in in the system with the parameters and stuff, it uh, allows you to play free and quick and fast. And um, I think he does a really good job pr- protecting the QB that way. Mm-hmm. You know, not not putting you in horrible situations. So this show is called Almost Entirely Sports. We've talked almost entirely sports. In fact, it's been entirely sports. So here, here's a couple of things on the almost side. I'm going to rapid fire a couple nonsense questions for you. Get to know you a little bit better. Uh, right now, you get to have uh, dinner with any two people ever in the history of the world, living or dead. But you have to make that decision right now. Otherwise, the opportunity disappears. <laughs> Who are your two people? Tiger Woods. Ooh. So I went athlete there. Tiger Woods. Uh-huh. Um, it's got to be some world leader. <laughs> I, th- I think most people are going either president or something biblical. Gotten a couple of Martin Luther oh, King biblical. Jr. That's pretty good. Ooh, Martin Luther King Jr. Jesus really is good. Jesus is a, a tough Trump card to beat if yeah. you you know are, are so inclined. Uh, it's a I, the, the issues. I've asked several people this question this week, and I don't have my answer yet. So I'm kind of putting you we'll in go, a uh, place. Yeah, we'll go Tiger Woods, and then I'm a history fan. I'll go like FDR. Ooh, I like that. That'd be a good dinner. I'd, I'd like to... I'll join you. It'll be World, all World War II's talk, yeah. Yeah, we'll get a table for four. Uh, what is a sports talk debate topic that you're really tired of seeing on TV, hearing on radio, seeing on the internet? Something we just talk about too much. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's a lot. Uh, There's a lot, I know. I, I feel like... <laughs> so I'm a huge, huge, uh, big LeBron fan. Sure. So obviously, like, the GOAT debate gets pretty old. I'd constantly having it because there's probably real no solution. Yes. But, uh, yeah, they're never, we're never going to get to see LeBron and MJ just yeah, play one on one for a while. So yeah. that one just keeps coming up and talking in circles. But that that might be the most zombie of all of the <laughs> sports talk debate topics. It, it can never fully be killed. Uh, what's the best movie you've seen in the last year? It doesn't have to have come out in the last year. Just something you've seen in the last 365 days, approximately. Uh, not a huge movie guy. I saw a TV show. Big Meet? TV show at Billions. Ah, okay. I love that one, Showtime. Uh, well, and then uh, last thing here, I don't, I don't know where this to take is. It's not movies, but what's your favorite hobby that does not have anything to do with sports? Leaving the sports world, what do you do in your free time? Um, here, golf's, golf's a sport. That, I've got that <laughs> That's twice. That's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, tough. But no, I, I'm a. Uh, it's kind of nerdy, but I like doing crossword puzzles. That's not that nerdy. I love a crossword yeah, puzzle. Are you a Wordle guy? Have you gotten in on Wordle? Get on Wordle. What's yeah. your Wordle streak right now? Do you know it off the top of your head? No, it keeps getting. Uh, for whatever reason, mine like keeps ending after every few days. It's like doesn't realize I kept doing it all the time. That's really frustrating. Yeah, it wasn't that. I mean, I get it, but I'm pretty low. It's usually around four. I've got four some tries. friends with the Athletic, and now they, uh, the New York Times owns them, you know, and uh-huh. Wordle. So I'll see if I can put in a word with the New York Times and Wordle people, and we'll see if we can get your streaks back. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I have that kind of power, but I can, uh, <laughs> I can give it a shot. Uh, Cooper, anything that you want to, to tell people, or, or any way they can follow you on socials, anything that you're passionate about, anything you want to tell people before you head out of here? Uh, no, I mean... Um I'm not big on social media. I, so I, I don't that's what I thought. Them, but yeah. I, I thought maybe maybe you're about to start a new NFT company or something. You know, you no. But I'm trying. Around. Yeah, I'm trying to learn more about those or that's interesting just, there's, a, there's there's a lot going on yeah well maybe and maybe that'll be the uh cro- maybe next time we talk it'll be crossword puzzles and yeah, yeah. <laughs> NFTs Some more wordle yeah in wordle well cooper uh, i really appreciate your time thank you for making some time for us here on uh, on radio row and good luck going into next season and uh yeah just enjoy talking to you and hope to talk to you again soon yeah gotcha thanks a lot